Cancun in Mexico on the Caribbean Sea. An idyllic seaside resort that attracts 5 million visitors each year. Each spring, the resort is stormed by a particular group of holidaymakers, the American Spring Breakers. These young revelers head there every year after their spring exams. Eight friends have just landed at the airport. Destry in the red hat and his friends have arrived from deep Nebraska in the United States. They are between 19 and 21 years old. They study business back home, but there's no point in asking them about work today. I'm ready for some shots now. <laughs> we'll be there quick. That's what we came for. Ocho. Si? Yes. Excelente. They have paid 1,350 euros each for an all-inclusive stay. Five days of unlimited partying. You feel you come, enjoy your vacation. The pool, the beach, Corona, tequila, oh, margarita, everything. Ah, all right. The group is very excited. For many of the boys, it was their first time on an aeroplane. Who here hasn't, hasn't never gone out of the US before today? OK, so everyone. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So this is your first stamp? Yep. Mm -hmm. so excited to be outside of the oh, US? Oh, yeah. Really excited. Don't, not sure what to expect, but it'll be great. <laughs> the group is headed in the direction of the Hotel Zone, the heart of Cancun's tourism, 30 minutes from the airport. 28 kilometers long, this stretch of sand is home to nearly 150 hotels. Destry and his friends will stay in one of the top spring break spots, a 900-room resort in the shape of a pyramid. Yo, listen up. You are in Cancun, Mexico. Nobody knows you and nobody cares what the fuck you're going to be doing right here, right? Thanks to the spring breakers, this hotel fills up during March in the off-season. The program includes sexy shows and cheeky entertainers. And to quench the thirst of the revelers, the resort has 20 fully stocked bars. For 1,350 euros each, Destry and his friends have to squeeze eight people into one small room. But they've not come to Cancun for comfort. Feel familiar from, uh, Not old enough to drink yet in the U.S., but... Do you drink in the U.S.? That's why we came to Mexico, and then it's legal. Yeah, I would say a lot of people do that because uh, you have to be 21 to drink in the United States, but here I think you just got to be about this tall and you can get away with it. <laughs> in fact, the legal age to drink alcohol in Mexico is 18. The hotel plays on the differences in legislation between the two countries to attract the maximum amount of customers. And this vice is pushed even further by offering unlimited drinks to the revelers. After a quick trip to the bar to stock up, the group heads towards the hotel's beach. This is all new to these Nebraskans. It is the first time they have seen the sea and played in the waves. Got it. I fucking love it. I've never been like outside of the middle of the United States. This is awesome. It's really salty, but I didn't think it was going to be quite that like pure blue. Like, I'm used to just normal, like, lakes and shit. I didn't expect this. See here, there's, there's ocean, people. Back home, it's cornfield, cows. All these would be cows. Pigs, cows. The party for Destry and his friends has not yet begun, and yet they have already succumbed to the madness of spring break. <laughs> We've been drinking for about six hours now. I just got cerveza, I just got beer in here. Everyone else, they're getting liquor and tequila and all that. After three o'clock, it all tastes about the same. While some of the group mess about like children, Nathan takes this opportunity to play Romeo. Yeah, we're doing real well. We're gonna get married. <laughs> After this weekend, we're gonna get married, Obviously, yeah. yeah. It won't work with this girl. 
But the young man is going to try his luck a little further down the beach, where he is not short of candidates. When did you guys meet? Uh, right now. Just now. We were together ever since, 30 seconds ago. This is going to be my wife. Yeah. You got this. You got the ladies. That's all you need. That's what spring break is, literally. And a beach, I suppose. And a beach. <laughs> Nightclubs partying in the sea. For these young Americans, the holidays are just beginning. An 11-hour flight from Europe, Cancun has become a dream factory, the partying realm for American students. Every spring, almost 30,000 young people show up for a week of madness without taboo. Go-go dancing competitions. Or games that leave little to the imagination. Wild parties in giant pools. Unlimited alcohol. In Cancun, there are almost no limits. Spring break is the holiday period after the end of year exams. A tradition dating back to the 1930s. It all started around an inter-university swimming competition in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. But a lot has changed since then. Now Cancun is the destination of choice. The city has become almost like an American division of Mexico, and tour operators have turned spring break into a lucrative business. <laughs> Hotel and nightclub owners fight a merciless battle to entice this clientele. An unusual show in a club. International DJs. Or even a boat transformed into a floating nightclub. Anything goes to get money in the tills. But this level of binge drinking is tough on Cancun's police and emergency services. ¿Dónde está? Probable intoxicación etílica. Hay una botella ahí de vodka. This party haven, however, is also threatened by violence linked with drug trafficking. In the last year, Cancun has experienced a resurgence of shootouts between dealers, even in the party districts. In the city, drug cartels wage turf wars una demostración de poder, pues ellos van a tomar el control de Cancún. Whilst the majority of spring breakers never leave Cancún, other holiday makers choose to make the most of the region and visit the Rivera Maya. Like Kevin. Incroyable. C'est vraiment incroyable tout ce qu'il y a autour. C'est vraiment un endroit magique. How has this Mexican seaside resort become the global landmark of spring break in the last 30 years? When the land of the Mayans ignites, it becomes the beating heart of the most famous rite of passage for American students. While spring break is a party marathon for some people, for others it's a job. Miguel lives in Cancun. During spring break, he has a unique task. He looks after the American party animals, so he trains like an athlete. Hay que tener condición física para poder estar atento y y como te desvelas, y este, andas de arriba para abajo, el hotel es muy grande, tú sabes tienes que andar corriendo en las carreras y todo eso por si pasa algo. Si no no aguantaría todo el mes. Así como yo trabajo casi las 24 horas al día. For the rest of the year, Miguel is a photographer, but for a month he puts this aside. During spring break, Miguel works for a leading American student tourism company, a tour operator which sends 3,000 young people to Cancun each year. Today, he has a meeting with his team to prepare for the season. Hey, guy, what's up? Hey, hey, ready, ready? Ready? Yeah. ready? No. Miguel works with Lupita. They are organizing a briefing with the new recruits. Hi, guys, welcome. How are you? How was your trip? 
Good. Uh, finally, you made it to Cancun. So... Yeah. Hopefully you're excited Around the table, a dozen young reps have come from the United States to supervise the spring breakers. They are provided with food, accommodation and cleaning, as well as a small salary of 400 euros for a month's work. So in general, what is going to be our job day to day? You have to cover eight hour shifts. You have to be in the lobby, you have to be by the pool, even if you're not working. Your job is to be looking for students and ask them, hey, are you having a great time? What I can do for you, okay? That's our main work here. Well, we expect everything. The objective is to black out that night. They, they are crazy, they are dancing, kissing each other with guys, with girls, like sometimes fighting. We, with no reason. So, um, is there a point that if they become too intoxicated that we step in and tell them that they can't drink? Because it'll be like, maybe they say, we, I paid for this. If you see that it's too much, just giving, giving them a shot from water or something like that. They are adults, so we can tell them, hey, stop, don't drink, no. The instructions have been given. Miguel's team is ready. The rep's mission today is to oversee a sea cruise. Miguel arrives at Cancun Marina, followed by the 200 revelers that he is tasked with supervising. And he is well on top of things. The Americans are renowned for being litigious, so to avoid any disputes in case of accidents on board, he has them sign these papers. So, esta carta es una responsiva, ok? Por si llega a pasar algo en el barco o algo, ellos firman. Miguel is covering his back because the boat is loaded with strong alcohol. Tequila, ron y vodka. Para palomas. Ron con coca. Vamos por lo demás. The rest, 200 kilos of ice cubes and 100 liters of soft drinks to make cocktails. Hey. ¿Cuánto alcohol tenemos, Víctor? Déjame chalar. ¿Cuánto alcohol tenemos? Tenemos 100 piezas. 100 piezas de vodka. 100 botellas. 100 botellas de vodka. De ron son 48 litros. De tequila son 48 litros. 200 litros de actor para todo el stream break. Se pongan bien crazy. 200 litros of strong alcohol for 200 party goers. That's one liter each, not counting the beer. It's enough to send half the boat into an alcohol induced coma. Whatever happens, the disclaimer has been signed. Destry and his friends have been waiting impatiently for this moment. I'm excited, this is going to be fun. We got a whole boat, three booze all night. The spring breakers are met with shots. A mixture of tequila and orange juice. They set off for four hours of drinking and ludicrous competitions. Having barely left the marina, the three bars on board are taken by storm. <laughs> Destry and his friends have just one thing in mind, consume lots of alcohol as fast as possible, just like everyone else on board a dangerous game called binge drinking. This phenomena wreaks havoc, particularly across some Anglo-Saxon and European countries. How many drinks have you had so far? Way, way too many to count. I have no idea. Way too many. To each their own technique. Some have come equipped with these funnels so they can drink more and faster. On the boat, everything has been thought through to encourage people to drink, especially the entertainment. You're gonna drink at least 10 seconds of the shots I'm gonna give away right now. After this, 
you have to be dancing, you have to be jumping, and you have to be getting wild. The entertainment team spray them with a cocktail made from tomato juice, tequila and salt. Destry and his friends from Nebraska drink shots from the girls' chests. Next up, a competition in which everybody wants to participate. I need the girl that knows how to drink the fastest, and I need the guy that can chug the fastest, all right? So, hold on. One, two, three, go! Okay, he's gonna be my first representative. He's gonna be the first one. Did you go up? One more, one more, one more. Destry and one of his friends, Casey, are chosen for the contest. The concept of the game is not highbrow, but everybody enjoys it. The participants have to drink a cup of beer as fast as possible. Casey faces the first duel. The girls are up next. One, two, three, go! Smash it in your head, smash it in your head when you finish! Come on! Destry has been eliminated from the competition, but Casey is still in the running. He's in the final. This time, the competitors must gulp down two cups of beer. Destry and his friends are very proud of this victory. We're gonna go home and tell everyone. Nebraska boys, we're going to Nebraska. 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 Under the influence of alcohol, the revelers let themselves go. Losing all inhibitions, the girls take themselves for go go dancers, and some of them don't hold back. Despite being completely inebriated, some jump into the shade of the water to escape the 35 degree heat. Others have fun on the slide, trying not to spill the drink they are holding. To avoid accidents, a lifeguard awaits them in the water with a boy. And there is a first aider on hand. Después de unas horitas ya cuando estén bien entrados en alcohol, pues ya yo creo que ya las golpes, caídas, me doy cuenta que aquí tienen un tobogán en el que también se pueden ir acá abajo o igual ellos mismos se pueden saltar, hay que estar pendientes. Así los vemos muy tomados, no los dejamos entrar. Now that the party is in full swing, the organizer pushes his audience a little further. He gets several girls up on stage. Do you want to see her movies? Yes or no? Everybody, you're going to say as loud as you can. Show your tits, come on. Show your tits. Show your tits, come on. This t shirt is their reward. You're real. That's for you. And that's for you. And like everything you want to hear is for you. For half an hour, several young women follow each other onto the stage and confidently exhibit their bodies. Oh, yeah. 
Destry has never seen this type of contest before, and he seems to be shocked. I'm never having a daughter. Those are Ever. No daughters. Girls here are bad. Never having a daughter. Only boys. No daughters. For the rest of the evening, the boat becomes a floating nightclub. Miguel, the spring breaker's supervisor, is used to seeing them in this state. <laughs> For Miguel and his team, the cruise has been a success. The tour operator who employs Miguel has made over 4 million euros this year, thanks to young Americans. Cancun can sleep peacefully tonight. Today it is one of the world's party capitals, with spring break bringing 40 million euros to the region each year. And everybody wants a share. In the middle of the hotel area, there is the nightclub district, the Forum. Almost 10,000 young people walk the streets each night. And the nightclub owners are eager to snap up this clientele, enticing them in with go-go dancers. Sebastian is the manager of Coco Bongo, a club renowned for its shows, which would not seem out of place in Las Vegas. Despite the international reputation of his nightclub, Every night, Sebastian is concerned. He faces tough competition. The city, Senor Frogs, La Vaquita, Daddy O. This is the competition that is trying to crush Coco Bongo. All these clubs belong to the Grupo Mandala, an industry giant that is close to monopolizing the entertainment sector in Cancun. So in order to stand out, Sebastian attracts the revelers with gifts, free drinks and balloons. He also has a small army of promoters, dressed in yellow. Excuse me. Sales are made in the road. The regular admission is 80 bucks. Okay, 80 bucks for the 100 bucks. For Sebastian, the financial stakes of spring break are daunting. He hopes that his club can double its turnover in a month. In this season, the value of the tickets increases, the value of the tables increases, and according to the demand, it's how it's going to control. So these dates are very important to maintain the good numbers of the year. There can be difficult months, like it could be October or November. Sebastian has another trick up his sleeve to keep Coco Bongo in the competition, aerial acrobatics shows. Here, revelers can party on the dance floor and take in spectacular acrobatics performances overhead. Sebastian is personally responsible for the acrobats' training. All performances rely on them. The smallest injury could jeopardize the entire season. Tomorrow marks the beginning of spring break's biggest weekend. Everything must be in place. Este fin de semana que está entrando es, es muy importante porque es el primero y es el más el, el primer fin de semana más fuerte del Spring Break. Esperamos recibir cerca de 5.000, 6.000 visitantes en, en un lapso menor a 3-4 días. Entonces es bien importante que todas las piezas estén dentro de su lugar. 
The acrobats come from Latin America, from Cuba and Argentina. They will spend the rest of the day perfecting their performances. Whilst Coco Bongo pins its hopes on its shows to bring in customers, its competitor, Grupo Mandala, has adopted a very different strategy. For this weekend, they have brought in a top DJ from California. All of this to me is just a job, in and out. Mm -hmm. Airplane, back to a hotel, hotel to an airport, go home, in the studio and then back. It's just like, it's crazy. This is Mackenzie Johnson, but he goes by the stage name Mac J. Hey, little baby. Spring Breaker, 2017 Spring Break right there. My type of crowd. His stage name doesn't give much away, but he's a rising star in the US music industry. Sharing the stage with headliners such as David Guetta. At just 26 years old, he travels the world playing to huge crowds. Australia, Thailand, South Africa, he has already done five world tours. Today, he is passing through Cancun. As soon as he arrives at his hotel, the interviews begin. How was Miami Music Week? Music Week is, is an experience for sure. They, you push yourself to a limit because you only have a certain amount of days to get as many gigs as possible. His manager, Tyrone, goes everywhere with him. Check in with PR. Hey, we've got this important interview just lined up today. Give him a call right now. So here we are. I don't even know who he's talking to, but it sounds like it's important. In fact, Mac J is answering questions from a music magazine in Las Vegas. It's an important part of his work. Okay, thank you. Publicity is publicity, right? There's no bad publicity. If there wasn't that, I would be nowhere. If there's no social media and there's no publicity, you know, I'd be still advertising at a Craigslist. So that's uh, it's a huge part of it. The hotel intends to take full advantage of their celebrity guest. My name is Anna. Um, uh, doing your check-in process. Uh, es una solicitud que acepta que pueda estar tomada su imagen para cualquier información que necesitemos del hotel, publicidad, etc. Para ustedes es bueno tener un DJ como él. Claro, es una publicidad excelente para el hotel. Gracias. Mac J's room costs 400 euros per night, with all expenses paid by the nightclub group who booked him. It is a suite with a stunning sea view. Phew. This is insane. This is crazy. I mean, it's like, look how nice this is. The water is like crystal clear. There's not too many people on the beach. There's no loud music. Vacation mode. But Mac J won't spend his afternoon on the beach. He stays in his room to prepare his set and rest. It's 10 o'clock and Miguel, the Spring Breakers leader, has arrived to collect Destry's group, as well as around 50 others. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, guys, everyone has a coupon and a dollar for the boss? Yeah. Okay, let's go. They are taken to the Forum, the nightclub district. Okay, let's go. For Destry and his friends, tonight's goal is to meet some girls. Some of them have already made a head start. I can take them all day. I just ask them to take pictures with their asses, and girls are fine with it. That was daytime when he took this. Imagine what nighttime was. It could be anything. Everybody is hoping for the same thing tonight. I don't even know what to expect. This is going to be crazy. He's taking about 10 chicks home tonight. I guarantee it. Write it down. Take it home. It's time for the Spring Breakers to head into the nightclub district. Destry and his friends pass by Coco Bongo without stopping. Miguel has an agreement with the competition, the city. Make a line here, okay? Make a line here because we need to, to, ch to change your coupon over there. 
Normally, entry to this club costs 70 euros, but thanks to Miguel's deal, they have bought these coupons for 50 euros, which can be exchanged for wristbands. Just next door, Coco Bongo is also welcoming the spring breakers. As well as using touts, Sebastian also has agreements with tour operators. One of the tour operator's buses has just arrived. Sebastian goes to meet them himself to make sure they don't end up at the wrong club. Hey. Coco Bongo is only 20 meters away from its competitor. A través de las agencias de viajes podemos captar este tipo de grupos. Bueno, llegaron a buena hora. Falta como 20 minutos para abrir la puerta y vamos todos para arriba. Sebastian is satisfied. Tonight, Coco Bongo is almost full with nearly 2,000 spring breakers. That's a turnover of 130,000 euros on entry alone. Hey! 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 hey. The curtain closes, the tension is starting to rise. These over the top shows featuring lookalikes dressed up as characters such as Tim Burton's Beetlejuice are what have given the club its reputation. There is also a Mexican Freddie Mercury. But the highlight of the show is the acrobatics performance. They depict an ancient battle made famous by the film 300. The Greek soldiers are fighting against the Persian army. The manager, Sebastian, never tires of the show. But when he sees the acrobats on stage without any safety nets, he always feels slightly anxious. No fallarle a los clientes que ya confiaron, que ya pagaron 70, 80, 150, 500, 1000 dólares. No fallarles. At the end of the show, Coco Bongo turns into a nightclub. Sebastian and his team get up on stage to thank their audience. Outside, Coco Bongo's competitor, The City, awaits the arrival of Californian DJ Mac J. Despite having tens of thousands of fans all over the world, he is also a little nervous. Hopefully the club's busy, because I don't want the club to lose money. That means I will never be asked back. So that's always a thing that's always in the back of our mind. The City is one of the biggest clubs in Latin America and can hold up to 5,000 people, so it must be filled. It looks promising. Mac J's fans are waiting to meet him and take a photo with him. But before it's time to get up on stage, the artist has to stop by his dressing room. Rolling Stone magazine has arrived for a photo shoot. Now, look at the camera. <laughs> so, with love. And an interview. So, they go to Oasis so, and just get fucking hammered. They die for one of the days. Yeah. They don't know what happens. <laughs> Mac J seems a little annoyed to have to play for the Spring Breakers. Do they care about the music, the Spring Breakers? I, I want to say yes, but I, I really feel like they just care about the party. 
They care about how much alcohol they're gonna be drinking. I've done the city three times now, so I kind of know the crowd. I just have seen in the past couple of years that it's gotten progressively worse because it's not really partying am anymore. It's literally going and getting fucked up. Oh my God. At 1 a.m., the DJ takes to the stage. After a few last minute adjustments, the show begins. For nearly two hours, the DJ mixes almost 300 tracks well known to the Spring Breakers. According to our information, thanks to his appearance, the club has sold 250,000 euros worth of tickets, almost double the revenue of Coco Bongo. Destry and his friends are also there to see the show. It is the first time they have been in a nightclub with so many people. This is at least eight times more people than in my hometown, so it's crazy. I've never been in this situation before. How many people there are in your hometown? There's about 190 people in my hometown. The local bar gets about 10 every night, so this is nuts. I am not used to this at all. Miguel, their rep, brings them back to earth. He reminds them what they are entitled to with their wristbands. Boys, 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 boys. He's going to be your waiter, OK? Whatever you need with him. Remember the tips, it's important to him, OK? So they're going to bring us until Thursday, OK? Woo My fucking six shot of tequila. Tonight's about to be fucked up. For Miguel, the open bar is a great money-making initiative. Se vende muy bien, ya que la gente lo que busca es estar tomando, que se atienda, que tengan las botellas. Eso es algo muy importante para la venta. En sí, casi el 80% que vienen a, a los antros ya tienen la barra libre. As the night comes to an end, everyone has their own seductive techniques. Here it's mouth to mouth with tequila. But Destry's friends have a completely different strategy. They ask the girls to show their breasts. Occasionally it works. Yeah! But not always. After five hours of uninterrupted partying, the clubbing district begins to empty. Miguel, who has spent the night looking after the spring breakers, also heads home. Meanwhile, alcohol has already taken its first victims. Oh, yeah. A group of paramedics have just set up in front of Coco Bongo. Eva, the leader, briefs his team. En el caso de que llegue a haber tomado más servicios a la vez, hay que priorizar los pacientes y ver si podemos hacernos cargo de uno o más pacientes. En general es esto. Ever and his team work for a private company, which specializes in caring for foreign tourists. For them, too, it all comes down to business. Their interventions are funded by the insurance of the American revelers. Tonight, Emmanuel is on duty. This is his first spring break as a first aider. He examines the scene for risky behavior. Como tal, velo, se cruza la calle sin darse cuenta. Y esperemos que tranquilo, tranquilo, algo que iba a pasar. No se dan cuenta, no miden los peligros precisamente por el estado en el que se encuentran. Un paso mal dado y puede provocarse otra vez lesiones, fracturas, todo tipo. The first radio call. Vamos a salir a servicio. 3 a.m. marks the beginning of the critical hour, where the binge drinking of the evening catches up with the revelers and leads to a series of accidents. Every incident is a race against time. ¿Dónde está? 
Behind the restaurant, a man is lying on the floor. He has vomited and is having difficulty breathing. His pulse is very weak. It is a serious situation for Emmanuel. Probably intoxication ethylica. Lamentablemente, hay una botella ahí de vodka. Probablemente le ingirió. The patient is at risk of choking on vomit. Emmanuel decides to intubate him. Vamos a permeabilizar su vía aérea para que pueda tener una mejor ventilación, para que entre el oxígeno de mejor manera, ya que en este caso sí vomitó y tiene secreciones, necesitamos permeabilizarla. ¿Listo? Gracias. Ok, ya la tengo. Ya. Once intubated and securely fastened, the patient is taken to the hospital. Con cuidado. Cuidado, por favor, la canola. Ok, listo. Gracias. The man is unconscious. The team must act quickly. His body is not reacting to Emmanuel's stimulation. Necesitamos realmente valorar qué fue lo que pasó, si ingirió algo más aparte del alcohol. En este tipo de, de, de lugares turísticos, eh, lamentablemente se puede mover cualquier tipo de droga en el lugar. Alcohol mixed with a drug like cocaine could be deadly. At the hospital, the emergency team takes over. Trae una taquicardia y está desaturando. Estaba en la zona hotelera. Está como desconocido. It will take a day and a half of rest for this amount of alcohol to be processed and eliminated from the man's body. Back in the clubbing district, the first aider is called to a new case. Supongo porque no veo a nadie. Ahí será ya. This time, the victim is conscious, but he has an open wound on his head. Just let me check on you, OK? Just let me check. To adapt to his patients, Emmanuel has learnt perfect English. But this young man is drunk and doesn't understand his questions. Where did you fell? Atlanta, Georgia. No, why did you fell? Why? Why did you fell? You were walking, you tramp? Uh, what? I tripped I on my, tramp? my friend. Ah, OK. Were you, what were you doing? You were eating? Something? Yeah, I was leaving. Ah, OK. With so many patients to manage in one night, Emmanuel settles for first aid. I know, I know that it's going there. I know, I know. You're OK. You have a minor injury. Uh, minor it's, injury. It's a little bit long. No, it's OK. You're going to have to clean that up. I'm going to leave it with a gas. It's OK. Uh, listen to me. I'm going to leave it with a gas. And tomorrow morning, you're going to go to see the doctor so see. he can take a look. See. OK? Seeing a doctor is the least of their worries. The young man and his friend had wanted to enjoy the party until the very end. <laughs> what happened? We have a plane to catch okay. in two hours. In two hours, OK, plane, that's good. Plane. OK, then go to your hotel. We have an airport. We go to the airport. Well, then go to the airport and take your plane, OK? okay. Don't, worry. Don't worry. Thank you very much. Don't worry. And it's not fine. Yes, that's what it's typical. He's going to have a little bit of pain in what he comes to his house in the United States. But we hope that it's going to be good. Unfortunately, it was a minor pain. There is no respite for Emmanuel during this month. There is no respite for Emmanuel during this month. Alcohol is responsible for a great number of falls. Okay. Hey, Taina, how are you feeling? This German tourist has hit her back by falling. Emmanuel checks that the spine is not affected. I need you to tell me you feel this. Do you feel it? Do you feel this? Can you move your feet? But the young woman is not responding. We need to take her to the hospital. See? Too drunk, she refuses to be moved. No mama's way. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No, no, no. Well, in this case, ya nos vamos. Don't worry, it's okay, it's okay. Just take care of her, okay? Yes, yes. Be good. During spring break, there is one thing that Emmanuel and his team fear more than anything else 
bullet wounds. For a long time, the party capital was spared by the raging war between drug cartels in Mexico. But for the past year, gangs have been clashing in the streets of Cancun. Hay muchos retenes policíacos, de tanto de la Policía Federal como de la Policía Municipal o Estatal. Sin embargo, no estamos exentos a que sucedan. La última ocasión fue aquí, en esta zona, en estos bares. Hubo un altercado con arma de fuego, eh, tanto en el Congo como en Mandala. Eh, dos personas perdieron la vida. The drama unfolded right in front of this establishment, three months before our filming. An armed man shooting at two people at point-blank range. The first is killed on impact, the second just before arriving at the hospital. According to the police, it was a settling of accounts between drug dealers. No doubt a turf war gone wrong. Both of the victims were dealers. But last January, it was foreign tourists who were targeted. This time, a man opened fire in a nightclub in a neighboring resort, Playa del Carmen, killing a Canadian, an Italian, a Colombian and two Mexicans. In 2016, Mexico's cartel war was the most deadly conflict in the world after Syria. The government heavily deploys police and army to manage the situation, but with little success. Last year, 23,000 people were killed in Mexico. In Cancun, this violence makes headline news, and the spring break economy is in jeopardy. Following the last attacks, 5,000 Canadian students cancelled their trip. Gabrielle is a reporter for a local daily newspaper and covers stories related to drug trafficking. He has lived in Cancun for 25 years and has watched the situation deteriorate. Mira, esta es la, la fiscalía donde fue el ataque a balazos de enero. Murió un, un agente ministerial y tres sicarios. Nunca se había vivido eso en, en Cancún. Y aquí delantito está la caseta de policía donde, donde un elemento pues, fue ejecutado prácticamente dentro de su patrulla. This last attack took place just a week ago, only five minutes away from the entrance to the hotel zone. Gabriel has come to take some pictures for his story. Este, todos estos son impactos de armas largas, son ráfagas de AK-47, AR-15. Fue una demostración de poder de estos grupos para decir que pues, ellos van a tomar el control de Cancún. Three police officers have been killed since the start of the year. As he leaves the scene, Gabriel receives a message from an informant. Pues reportan disturbios al interior del Cerezo, es la cárcel de Cancún. La mayoría de los internos están relacionados con delincuencia organizada, se eh, arman grupos, así es con el narcotráfico. Gabriel also works for the radio station. He is going to be live on air. Cancun prison is overpopulated. It has a capacity of just 800, but hosts 1,800 prisoners. Sí, estoy llegando ya aquí a la a la cárcel. Este, ahorita te te reporto. Creo que hay una riña, se escuchan algunos... Se escuchan piedras o algo así. Están peleando. Pelea. The situation inside is almost out of control. 300 prisoners belonging to rivaling groups of drug traffickers have clashed, waging war in prison as in the streets. The police have been called, as well as the Red Cross. Sí, claro que sí, Carla, estamos en un lugar seguro. Te puedo confirmar que sí son eh, disparos en la azotea. Se encuentran eh, precisamente ya policías, eh, se escuchan por momento detonaciones y también eh, la activación de, las, de los gases lacrimógenos para controlar posiblemente esta revuelta que se encuentra en el interior. En estos momentos están saliendo dos ambulancias. To restore order in the prison, the army has been called in for reinforcement. There is no question of letting a drug trafficker escape. 
posiblemente la pelea sea por el control de los espacios, incluso el control de las visitas conyugales, la venta de licor, venta de, de drogas, todo esto genera fuertes intereses entre los grupos. It takes an hour for calm to be restored. The prison warden draws up a report, which he presents at an improvised press conference. El saldo es de un muerto y tres heridos. Todo el enfrentamiento fue con piedra, roca, lo que tenían a la mano. This violence makes a real dent in Cancun's reputation. Gabriel worries that his city will succumb to the same fate as other Mexican beach towns, corrupted by the drug cartels and facing the decline of its key tourist market. La violencia pues, se ha desatado bastante en Cancún, que puede llegar al grado de convertirse en un Acapulco, lo que sucedió ahí, que se mató por completo al, al turismo por tanta violencia. Aquí ya se teme que suceda en, en Cancún. But for now, the spring breakers continue to arrive in their masses. And drug dealers do their business on the beach, like this man in the blue T-shirt, who has cocaine on offer for the tourists. A few meters away, the Mandala Beach Club entertains the holidaymakers during the day. The party never stops in Cancun. <laughs> A group of young Parisians have come to experience this wild atmosphere. 23-year-old Kevin is a university exchange student based in Guadalajara, in the center of Mexico. His girlfriend Valentine has joined him and their friends have come to visit, especially for spring break. They are going to tour the region, but first they want a taste of the spring break experience and the nation's famous tequila. The French group are surprised by the experience. Kevin and his friends party in moderation, unlike their neighbors. The objective of the game? Drink the alcohol for 10 seconds. No, no. Thank you. Thank you. It's all too much for Valentine. Unlike the spring breakers, this week Kevin and his friends will venture beyond Cancun. To the majestic settings of the Rivera Maya, which stretches south of the city. Long before the American students invaded, these lands saw the birth of one of Mexico's greatest civilizations, the Mayans. A culture that left behind dozens of spectacular archaeological sites, such as Tulum. This ancient fortress, now also a commercial port, is the most important Mayan coastal city. At its peak in the 13th century, it gave shelter to nearly 15,000 people. Kevin's group have come to visit. <laughs> To access the site, the group has to pass through this wall, which is five meters thick. Voilà. Bah, C'est super joli. Je pensais pas que ça allait être euh, comme ça, qu'il allait avoir plusieurs euh, ruines éparpillées un peu partout, mais euh, beaucoup de verdure, <laughs> très beau. The Mayans are renowned for their buildings. This site is made up of about 30 of them. The most impressive is this temple in the form of a pyramid, nicknamed El Castillo, or the castle. Tulum is the only Mayan city by the sea. 
Ça change de l'univers du Spring Break, les plages avec des gens qui dansent, de la musique, de l'alcool à volonté. Ici, c'est vraiment des plages avec des paysages incroyables. C'est des endroits paradisiaques, magiques, vraiment pour se relaxer et puis découvrir les merveilles du monde, ce qu'on nous offre. The Rivera Maya also hosts one of the most unique underwater spectacles in the world. This beautiful beach lined with coconut trees is called Akumal, which means Turtle Bay in the Mayan language. Simply by dipping your head under the water, you see the majestic creatures. The turtles come here to feed on the seabed, but also to lay their eggs. Today, as a result of the construction of hotels threatening their habitats, these turtles are in danger of becoming extinct. <laughs> but the sea here is 30 degrees, so it is better to head inland to cool off, to the so-called cenotes. These are freshwater wells, hidden within vegetation, and the region is crammed with them. These blue pits were held sacred by the Mayans and were used for holding human sacrifices. The water temperature here is slightly cooler at 24 degrees. Tu sautes maintenant une fois que t'es là Moi je saute. C'est sûr que non. Je sais pas encore. Si non, les trois vont sauter avec moi, y'a pas de problème pour ça. 1, 2, 3. C'est un. Ah, c'est trop bien. Elle est bonne, non, elle est bonne, elle est bonne. One last dip and it's time for the Parisians to leave. C'est calme. Il y a la nature et bien sûr qu'on est loin de tous les spring breakers qui sont là que pour faire la fête et danser en permanence. Mais on n'est pas loin en distance, hein, c'est juste à côté en 30 minutes une heure on y est. For now, the spring breakers prefer nightclubs and beach parties to these wonders of nature. But maybe in a few years once they have finished their studies, it'll be these Mayan temples that tempt them to return.